is going to be a, a project that I have. Um, it's been a kind of a project that me and Mark Birch um, with Birch Motorsports, we've been kind of going back and forth probably for the last year. Um, he was really wanting to do an old school look on a new school car. Well, that's great. I mean, it, it's going to look really cool, but it was trying to find the right car because back in the day when you used to do race cars, they were typically painted, pinstriped, you know, stuff like that. They used the lines of the car to kind of make the graphics. Well, back then that, that's perfect because they always had really cool shapes, you know, different angles that the body went at. It looked really neat. Nowadays cars, they got the down tubes. I mean, they're pretty basic, not much to them. I mean, they're kind of like a rectangle, so they don't give a lot to it. Um, so we came up with a car, which is a, I think it's Steve Kinzer car from back in the day. Um, the, the body lines worked actually pretty good to what he used to run way back when. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a project that, I mean, it's not something I'm gonna get done today i mean it's gonna be something i've actually had this car sitting here for about a month he's he's not in any huge hurry because i mean we're trying new things on it um, as you're going to see in the videos it's it's kind of a, a learning and process i mean something we're going to do is we're going to try to wrap the tank or at least partially wrap the tank which we normally don't do um so yeah it's going to be a really neat way to show an old school look on a new school car so yeah, stay tuned and make sure you watch all the vlogs and see how see how the process is going. This is where it gets a little trickier. So since the design, as you're gonna see at the end of this whole series, it's gonna look like it rolls, like it rolls over from the side to the hood. So typically you don't wanna do that. I mean, it's, it's, you can do it. It's just a little more difficult um, as far as you gotta be perfect. And if you're not perfect, then you're gonna start over multiple times. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna actually take knifeless tape, kind of put it in my seam. And what's nice is we have bright lights in here. And so I can kind of see gray areas. So what you want to do is you want to look at the gray area and kind of get that stripe, you know, get that knifeless tape where you're going to overlap kind of right in that area. Cause then when it's gray, I mean, it's typically darker, so you can't see it. So it, it looks like it actually transitions the way it should. So yeah, take a look. couldn't get the string to work but so the reason why I use the blue tape is I like to cover up areas that are basically it's gonna make my wrap one stick to it and I don't want that to happen because when you're trying to wrap something you want it to be free you want it to be able to you know pull on it do whatever what the blue tape does is it kind of helps you know keep away from those areas and keeps it you know kind of up floating in a sense um, what I also do is I kind of cover up some of the bolts and stuff that way it doesn't, you know, sharp edges want to cut at the wrap. So yeah, that's why I did the blue tape. I do it right next to the, the knifeless tape. I'll show you here. So 
you can kind of see here how I got the knifeless tape and I got the blue tape. Kind of just going side by side, a little gap in between it. And then I got, you know, kind of different areas. That way, I don't think this wrap's gonna go up this far, but just in case. Um, I also kind of cover up, you know, edges, make them not so sharp. You can see here. And then also, right back here. This is something that typically a lot of people don't wrap completely. They'll take and they'll slit actual part of it and then kind of overlay it like that. What I did is I kind of went a little bit more creative, more a little gutsy, and I actually wrapped around it. Now, when you wrap around it, the key to this is when you get done with it, is get your, get your heat gun, get heat on it, and basically warm it up, warm the whole area up uh, to like 100 and 160 degrees or so just to kind of get it so it kind of bakes it right into it if you don't do that any stretching i did around that will you know in about six to eight hours will actually pop out become a bubble and that's what you don't want um same thing i had here when i went underneath this is another part that people will typically slit it or they'll put an insert in here because you don't really see it i mean it's not really something that you know it's highly critical that it's, it, it is shown um, typically when we put sponsors over this, what happens is a sponsor goes you know, into that dip. Once it goes into the dip, you lose however many inches is in that dip. Um, as you can see also, we don't have any sponsors on this yet. Main reason why we don't have any sponsors is because I want to make sure everything fit first. So this is kind of a partial wrap, not a true full, full blown wrap. And you can see there's a lot of parts that we're doing that it's going to be a little different. So. This was just kind of, we wanted to see how it looked first and then we'll put sponsors on later. Um, so if you were to buy this kit, you would, you would typically buy it with sponsors, you know, printed inside this, save money. Um, you know, another way to do it is do the, do the wrap part and then, you know, do the decal separately. That way you get a little more play on where you want to put them at. Um, but yeah, but I hope you enjoyed part one. Um, part two, it's, we're going to be working on the other side, uh, a little more detailed. This side was more of a test trial run. And the other side is actually, I mean, can be a little easier because, you know, the cockpit of it, you got an actual gap of nothing. This we're gonna have, you know, we have a little more detail to it. So you, you get a little more to watch and see what, what goes on.